Welcome to the Central Wisconsin Spotlight Home Enhancement Show. I'm your host, Mark Skiba. Whether you own your home, are looking to buy or sell a home, or are just interested in home improvement, you're probably aware that there are plenty of unexpected projects and maintenance that come with signing that mortgage. We sat down with local experts in six different fields to get an idea of what's new in their area of expertise and a few things current and future homeowners might benefit knowing about. According to realtors, one of the most desirable features people look for in a home is a fireplace. Think about how many Christmas cards have families huddled around a cozy fireplace. As B.J. Marcel tells us, there is a fireplace option for any home. Usually a fireplace isn't just a heating apparatus uh, or appliance. It's more or less a uh, work of art inside of a house. We really specialize in getting our, our customers and clients into a product that really fits their needs. We don't want a 80 year old man using pellets because he can't do the maintenance. Uh, same with wood. Uh, we're gonna suggest him go to gas. So really uh, get to know your customer on a one-to-one -one basis and find out what's really best for them. So wood stoves have always been a great way to add some heat into a room, but they've come a long way from steel units to cast iron units, soapstone units, and even hybrid units like this one. Now this one here is a top loading stove so you don't have to bend over. And we can actually then put a grill inside here so you can do some grilling in winter in your home. In an EPA wood fireplace, we're no longer burning wood to get heat. We're in essence cooking wood to get flue gases. And then there's a baffle system at the top and we're reburning those uh, flue gases three and four times before it goes out the chimney. Uh, with a traditional st uh, style gas fireplace, we, got, we can do a little bit more ornate stuff with the fronts. There are different fronts that we can pick out to give it that really um, true ornate feel um, so it can be a little bit more custom to you like something like this, we can come out and you, you just didn't want a square wall of stone, which is very common. So we went and recessed this wall back with, um, and put in some, an arch into it. Um, you could put a light up inside there so that it really accents the fireplace a little better. Um, also by putting corners on the, the stone, it gives it that three-dimensional look. It doesn't look like something that was just glued up on the wall. Stellar came out with a true corner fireplace. So you get a very large, um, unit in a very tight space. And the other nice thing about it is no matter where, which part of the room you're sitting, you get a beautiful look of a fire. So not every decor is going to fit a traditional uh, gas or wood stove. In that case, we have freestanding gas stoves that are uh, in a more of a sleek, uh, clean line looks, uh, like this Yodel gas stove here. This uh, will give you a nice view from every angle but also fit into a more of a modern style house. In these older houses and you have an old efficient fireplace and it's sucking all the heat out of the house, even if you're not using it, it's costing you money every day to have it in your house. Um, we, re we do offer retrofits or inserts, so we can go put in a gas insert in there and convert that wood unit into a gas. We can also convert it into a high efficiency unit, uh, wood unit. So we can slide in a wood insert into that opening um, and then reline it. So now you're, when you're burning wood, um, you're gonna get some heat off of it. And when you're not burning, uh, you're going to be getting, uh, you're not losing all your heat off the, the chimney. So if you're looking at going, converting a wood unit to a gas insert, we have a lot of different designs and styles from the ultra modern to the ultra classic, rustic, and everything in between. So wood inserts like these are a great way to convert your inefficient wood burning fireplace into a high efficiency uh, wood heater. So with these, it would be like the fireplace, we can then burn wood to get flue gases and then in turn burn those flue gases and get a tremendous amount of heat off of them. When, when you come in and you have an idea of what you're looking for, we'll actually sit down one-on-one uh, -on -one and then we use uh, Google SketchUp and so we can actually draw your room and um, make changes to a design. So um, for example, if you're, I have an idea, I want it in a corner, but I really don't, I want um, some artistic parts to it. We'll draw up six or seven different design op, um, possibilities so you can actually see what it looks like in your house and then we'll make changes to that design until you get the exact design that you're looking for. 
Stop into Marcel's in Wausau or Wisconsin Rapids today to talk about the options available in your home. Besides being a great way to enjoy the outside world from the comfort of your home, windows are great for letting natural light inside. But as Mike from Exterior Professionals tells us, they may be letting in more than just light. There's a lot of heat loss in the wintertime, uh, a lot of heat entering in the house in the summertime. So obviously if you have good quality insulating windows, uh, we'll keep your heating and cooling costs down uh, to make your house more efficient, less money going out of your pocket to pay higher bills, or makes your house more comfortable. This could be our typical window that a homeowner could have in their house now. He's actually an old Curtis window that was made here in Wassa. And, and as you can tell, it's, it's in pretty rough shape, uh, broken glass. And there's a lot of units like this in town that need to be replaced. So typically we would measure this window custom fit and we could put in a window which looks just like this with the dark oak wood grains on the interior. Uh, these sashes, two locks and they would unlock and you can raise them up and they also tilt in for cleaning. And also with the upper sash, comes down also, so if you'd like to vent in the summertime, maybe it's underneath the eave and it's raining outside and you still want some air and you could vent from the top. So actually both of these units will tilt in for cleaning. So you can do everything from inside the house. There's a lot of vinyl windows out there today and you need to have knowledge to be able to differentiate between the windows because there's a lot of vinyl windows out there that operate, obviously, but they're not good insulating quality. The glass packages are different. Our, our typical double hung has a frame that looks similar to this. This one has the foam filled frame and foam filled sash. It uh, has two panes of glass with a spacer in between which are which is our foam spacer uh, your, your typical windows that are out there a lot of them have a metal spacer similar to these that I have here uh, which when that metal spacer is put in the glass uh, it transfers more of the cold uh, temperatures from the outside glass to the inside glass the foam spacer that we use obviously is very flexible and does not transfer the cold from the outside to the inside. So your inside piece of glass is going to be about 15 degrees warmer with this type of spacer. That is the only one that we use in all of our windows. Typical casement unit, this one happens to be in a cherry interior, has the folding down handle, uh, a one handle lock system that unlocks the window from top to bottom and operating very smoothly with the hardware that we have from Truth Hardware. The screen is removable from the inside and you can actually open, <clears throat> open the window all the way and this casement window can be cleaned on the outside from the inside of the house. We have found that through our customers that we work with that when we do replace your windows with the newer high efficiency windows that are out there now, that they normally say, well, we should have done it five years ago because they're so much more efficient, easier to use, uh, and they know that they're gonna save money under heating and cooling. For any questions or window needs, contact Exterior Professionals or stop by their office on North 6th Street in Wausau. Most homes here in central Wisconsin sit on top of a basement. One of the consequences of having a basement is dealing with the moisture problems that plague so many houses in our area. We spoke to the experts at Muzzanusky Masonry about how you can control that moisture. There's, there's an overabundance of water in our area, central Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin, and 
the water tables fluctuate with the rise and fall of the lakes, like Lake Superior. That's the big one. That the higher Lake Superior is, the more groundwater you have on, under your basement, which comes up, attempts to lift up the slab, and the water actually starts leaking in through the cracks or where the slab meets the wall. Well, if you're living in a house with a wet basement, um, obviously you're losing half of your house that you could be living in or storing things. So you have a tremendous amount of storage that's ruined by the water, the humidity, the mold. It does, over a short time period, wreck your possessions. Also, the humidity starts to rise above 70-80% humidity in your basement. That's really bad. And that permeates throughout the house. And you begin to smell uh, a humid, moldy smell. Uh, that's probably one of the largest complaints we get. And that's with poured basements, blocked basements, and the old stone foundations as well. If you could get your humidity down below 50%, like 49, 48, 47, mold can't ordinarily grow below 50%. So that's something you really want to look at, is major humidity reduction. Basically, we do exactly what the state of Wisconsin requires when you build a home. We put a drain tile system under the slab and along the footing, all the way around and run it into a buried, sealed sump pump crock with a sump pump and run the pipe outside. And as the water rises, it actually stops at the drain tile level and runs downhill into the crock pot or the sump pump pit and runs out. That's the very, very best way to alleviate the under slab water pressure. Yeah, people think this is a lot bigger process than it seems. You know, we come in the basement, we get our things done in the basement, we, there's no digging outside, we don't have to rip your yard up or anything like that. And a couple days we're done and out of there. A lot of the customers are at work when we're there, so it's, they come home and they actually call the office and say, wow, I can't believe that you guys are done and how clean it is. Most of the time when we get to a house, a lot of the stuff in the basement is already ruined, moldy, wet, and the, the people are distraught about that. And it's a very good time to begin a cleaning process. After all of these years, finally say no to wetness and mold and get that waterproofing system installed. You can do this year round. You can do this in the winter. We prefer it in the winter because the water table's lower and everything's frozen. and as we're doing the job, you're not, there's not so much water that we're having to deal with. At, because I've been into this for so long now, 30 plus years, I'm noticing that ultimately every basement will eventually leak unless you build it right the first time with the drain tile and the sump pump front, right from the beginning. It's very difficult to sell a house nowadays with a wet moldy basement. You can picture yourself looking at homes, which one would you buy? One that's finished already with a dry basement? For basement waterproofing or any other issues involving basements, please call Muzanuski Masonry or log on to MuzanuskiMasonry.com. Think about the largest moving structure on your property. It's your garage door and it has a huge effect on the appearance of your home. We spoke with the owners of Badgerland Overhead Doors about the latest options available and why you should be paying more attention to your garage door. Um, some people don't need an insulated door. Say, for example, a lot of our rental units are uninsulated garage doors. It's an uninsulated building, so there's no need to spend the money on an unins or a insulated door. Um, but sometimes people want to spend a little extra, get the extra strength and durability of the door out of it. Um, so it all depends on your needs, what you're looking for as far as what kind of door you want to get. Garage doors start at a basic entry level, just a raised panel. Um, as time progresses, new styles become available. Uh, the carriage style line that we have uh, brought out about 10 years ago 
people had started getting more design and more aesthetics into their garage doors, which does totally change the look of your home. Uh, a lot of the importance of your garage door and the styles of your garage door, say you add windows or um, go with a style of carriage, uh, exterior hardware, that does add a lot of look to your home. And it also adds a lot of value to your home also. General maintenance is very important. Uh, even to call us to do a lubrication, just to check all your adjustments on all your devices, make sure your safeties are all working, make sure your system's not outdated. Door will typically let you know if something's wrong. You'll either hear a loud noise or an awkward no or noise you haven't heard before. Um, so it's still, the door itself will let you know, but if you haven't had your door looked at in a couple years, um, two, three, four years, it's probably highly recommended you get someone to take a look at it. We suggest every two years to call us and look things over, make sure there's no premature wear, um, take a look at your old devices. Um, if the door has been damaged, hit by a vehicle, if the rollers have been falling apart where the bearings have went out of them or something, it's easy to, to, to detect a problem with your garage door. And then again, a lot of things are overlooked and thought that, well, this, this ain't too bad or this will make it through another year. And of course, your mind puts it on the back burner until there's a major problem and it's 20 below outside and Wisconsin is very, very, very hard on garage doors and old man winter really does its toll on them. The most common service call we run into would be a broken spring. Um, a lot of people want to try to fix it themselves and save a dollar, but I don't recommend trying to work on a torsion spring. It, it can be dangerous. Um, so spend a little bit of extra money on it and have it fixed by a professional. Your garage door torsion spring does a lot more work than what you think. All the way to that garage door is lifted by the springs. So when you go up to your garage door and you can lift it with one finger, the weight of that spring is compensating all the way to that door. Unless you're familiar with, with what you're doing, I, I wouldn't recommend working on a torsion spring yourself. It can, uh, can cause a lot of damage. The misconception that we a lot of times get is that people go to a big box store thinking they'll save a lot of money. Or the do-it-yourselfers will it's just a garage door, I can install it. Well, it's not as easy as that. It, our prices are very, very competitive with big box stores. Uh, the quality of product that you get from a big box store is very basic, very low end. Buying the product from Badgerland, everything we install gets the best springs, gets the best rollers, gets the best grade hardware, of course gets the best installation warranty. For all things garage door related, call Badgerland Overhead Door or log on to badgerlandoverheaddoor.com. We couldn't do a home show without talking about the kitchen. And one of the most outstanding features in any kitchen is the countertop. We sat down with an interior designer from Woodstock Flooring to talk about the options currently available and the pros and cons of each one. The hot item right now is granite. Um, we sell the most granite here, especially since we've come out with the honed and the text textured finishes. Granite countertops are they're hard, they're very durable, they're scratch resistant, um, stain resistant. They're not always stain proof. You have to reseal them, they're a natural rock, um, so they're very hard. We're seeing a lot of people that want the, the durability of granite but don't like the shininess. So a lot of people are going with more of a honed finish or a brush finish, which is more of a matte finish with the texture on it. So you, you still get that granite and the look of granite, but it is more of a natural look, which a lot of people use in more rustic, rustic applications. Your least expensive to start out with would be your laminate countertops. Um, and then it would go up from there, your granite and your quartz. So 
the laminate does have a lot to offer for color variation and the new edge styles to look like granite if you want that softer, warmer feel. Because um, the laminate will be warm to touch, granite and quartz will be a cold to the touch. Laminate is a softer product, so it doesn't last as long as a granite or a quartz. Granite and quartz are kind of timeless. They're a lifetime product. Um, laminate is more durable than what it used to be. It is more scratch resistant and chip resistant and wear resistant than what it used to be made out of um, because they now they put aluminum oxide in the countertops, the newer colors, to make it last longer than what it used to. This laminate island here is a great example of the new colors um, that Wilson Art has come out with that shows a lot of color variation in it, a lot of veining to mimic the look of granite, natural stone. Um, they have new edge styles available that were not available before, which can wrap all the way around an island instead of having a flat side. Undermount sinks used to only be available in products such as quartz or granite. Um, now they are available in laminate countertops and they come in a variety of styles. They can, they're stainless steel, there's the quartz sinks, and they come in a variety of colors, and they can be undermounted in any laminate countertop. So if you want a more soft look, go with the laminate. If you want a harder, harder look and you don't mind the coldness of granite or quartz, um, you could go with that. If you want a, a timeless look, and something that's gonna last you pretty much a lifetime, we would steer more towards the granite and the quartz products. This is an example of what's new with quartz products. This is a Cambria countertop. You can see how they put the different quartz in there with, with mixed with different colors and pigments to get unique countertops. Um, this particular countertop here, you will not match it again because of the variation that is in the products. They just mix in the pieces and it swirls and however your swirls come out, that's your countertop. If you're looking at remodeling your kitchen or bath or you're building a new home, um, I would invite you to stop into Woodstock Harwood Flooring and Design Center. We do have a large showroom, um, a large staff to help you pick out your products um, from anything from your flooring, your, your cabinets, your countertops, we have it all available here. Stop in the Woodstock Flooring Showroom in Burnhamwood to see the latest and greatest in kitchen countertops, cabinets, flooring, and much more. Living in Wisconsin, we know that with the colder weather comes higher energy bills. And while most of us probably think our homes are pretty well insulated, Kane Rocco of Rock and Tate Exteriors tells us there may be more you can do to save money and energy. Yeah, everything is ever changing and the most recent things, even in the last three to five years, is uh, foam is introduced into the building process, which is in attic spaces, in floor systems and things like that that was never there before. Uh, we've always used simple things like fiberglass or cellulose to achieve you know, savings, and it, it was effective, but not as effective as we can achieve things with foam. You're slowing something down with cellulose or fiberglass, and then with foam, you're stopping the heat loss. So that's the biggest difference in change. Um, even a house that was built two years ago, if it wasn't attic air sealed correctly, uh, in an attic space can benefit from air sealing. Most homes, they say 98% of the homes are not air sealed correctly or were never air sealed in the United States. So it's a statistic that's kind of staggering because we all think that, hey, we're up to code. But code is just that. We're meeting a standard of whatever state or county you're in. Not necessarily is it appropriate for what you want to get out of your home. There are conditions you have to use fans, which is your bathroom and kitchens. If those are used properly, a uh, house can't be too airtight. There are certain standards that are federally mandated based on air tightness. That's why we use home performance testing and make sure everything is safe. Um, we do pre and post tests to make sure that uh, uh, your fans are effectively working. Um, to have that air exchange that is still necessary, but the reason ventilation was always such a major aspect of, of attic spaces before is to move the moist air and warm air that you're letting get up in your attic out of there fast enough so it doesn't cause a problem. What we're trying to do is stop that, let ventilation work the right way, and then effectively move the wrong air out of your house correctly. 
When you're in the attic and you look at it without any insulation, you can see there's top plates of walls. That's what this represents, exterior top plates. So when the insulation is not blown there, you can see all the cracks and crevices that occur. This is where the heat loss comes up in your walls and out into your attic. What we do with air sealing is we take two-part foam, as you see here, and we encapsulate those penetrations to make sure that no heat loss occurs. And we do this throughout the whole attic. That's why it becomes important to do it with a re-roofing process because you're stopping all heat loss into that attic space. So you're not furthering it one point compared to another. Here's a typical fixture in an attic. So like a light fixture um, in your attic where you have lots of crevices and cracks around it from it being installed. You can see that here's where the wires come in for the fixture to be functional. Um, here's that same fixture encapsulated in foam. It's going to stop where those crevices are around the fixture and where the wires come into the fixture from heat, losing heat into the attic space. And then here's an, uh, cellulose which is causing a greater R value above that fixture to stop thermal transfer from the attic to inside the home. So just like anything, if you exhaust something, you have to have an intake related to it. So your walls and your windows and your floors are your intakes. I've had people come to me and say, hey, we don't need all new windows. It's drafty in here. And it turns out they have you know, 10 air exchangers per hour and it's all going out their attic. Well, it's trying to balance itself out. So now I just saved them $40,000 in windows because all they needed to do is spend three to $4,000 in attic air sealing to stop the problem. The best way to start with any process to, is to understand what your house is doing. So we deal with home performance tests Testing. This is something that's uh, uh, produced through focus on energy. So allied partners can help you with this. This gives you an evaluation where your cold spots or your heat loss is more accurately so you're not wasting money on foam. Um, this way you have a gauge of how can we fix the problem, how do we tackle the problem. Then we go inside and we take a look at okay what can we do effectively uh, with air sealing and things along those lines to save you energy and build comfort in your home. So when you look at attic air sealing, box sill spray foaming, increasing R values, fixing ventilation, you can see a, a return on your investment in about three to five years. So when you're looking at a small investment up front and a really quick return on your money, it's probably the best way to help your home. Contact Rock and Tate Exteriors for all your home insulating needs, as well as for the latest and best roofing options. That's all we have this time for this special presentation. For the Central Wisconsin Spotlight Home Enhancement Show, I'm Mark Skiba. Take your business to the next level with 777 Productions. We not only produce high quality television advertisements, we also do industrial video, video for your website, Facebook page, YouTube, whatever your video needs, we can handle it and make it affordable for you. So if you need anything from a full length production to a short series of clips to show to your customers online, log on to 777productions.com or call the number on the screen. 777 Productions is a division of News Channel 7.